Regulations, Licenses, and Market Opportunities, narrated by Julie Larson. Every state has different rules and regulations for going about selling animal products. And I suppose all products, but uh, in particular the meat products do seem to have a lot of rules and regulations attached to them. So know your rules, uh, especially uh, these go by the state. So for Illinois, uh, most of the uh, rules and policies are underneath the Illinois Department of Agriculture, but there are uh, honey and dairy is actually handled under the Department of Public Health. Uh, and this will be different from state to state. So you must know your state's rules and you must abide by them. If you've had your animals processed at a state licensed processor, you are allowed to sell those products off the farm. But you first need to get a meat and poultry license in the state of Illinois. And this is done through the Bureau of Meat and Poultry. It's uh, you send in your paperwork, the forms are on the internet uh, yearly uh, along with your $50 application fee and you do need to do this every year send in your fee and your application and then they will send somebody out who will inspect your place and they have certain guidelines that is also on the internet that you can find that they want to have uh, thermometers in your freezers your refrigerators uh, they want to make sure that you're handling pest control adequately uh, essentially, it's really anything that you're doing uh, to, to contain that meat. They're not going to really care about your live animals, although they probably will want to walk around and take a look. But they're really concerned about what happens to that product after it comes back from the processor and before it gets sold to a customer. They'll make some recommendations on things that they'd like to see you do. And then hopefully, uh, if everything is okay, you will receive your license in the mail. And this is what they'll be looking for uh, if you do decide to go to farmer's markets. They will want to see this license. You will need to have this. Selling dairy products in most states, especially Illinois, is the most heavily regulated of all the animal products. So they will, uh, there's the very strong policies and rules on um, how you maintain your herd, the milk that uh, you, um, comes out of your animals will need to be tested. Then if you're going to be doing bottling on your farm, that's a whole nother license. Uh, and then if you really want to go further and do yogurt and cheese uh, or creamery, that would be a whole nother license. Uh, so it's it's very heavily regulated and, uh, and especially in the state of Illinois very difficult to do. Um, there are not that many dairies in the state of Illinois. Uh, it goes through the Department of Public Health through the Food, Drugs, and Cosmetics subchapter, Part 775 and 785. Uh, very extensive listing of all the rules and regulations. An egg seller's license is a fairly simple process. Uh, you first have to kind of figure out what kind of operation you have, how many eggs you're going to be selling, how many hens you have, is going to determine which license you are going to apply for. It's a very inexpensive license for Illinois. It's only $15. So if you're going to do on-farm uh, sales directly to a customer, uh, you do not need a license as long as you have less than 3,000 hens. If you are going to do uh, off-farm sales, if you want to sell to maybe a restaurant, do take some to farmer's markets or a grocery store, you have what's called a limited egg seller's license. 
And then the full license would be that if you have, uh, you're going to sell off farm and you have more than 3,000 hens. So you have a fairly large uh, um, flock of, of laying hens. Uh, you also, for the limited and the full, they do want you to grade them and they do want you to candle them. So you will need a little bit of equipment as far as just a scale, a candler, very inexpensive, a wash station. And they send out, you apply for your license, very similar to a meat broker's license. You apply for, uh, you you're send in the money with your application, they send out an inspector, and then they make recommendations and... Uh, you um, should be able to receive your license if, if you are following all the rules. For a long time, honey in the state of Illinois was uh, required, uh, a beekeeper was required to have what's called a honey house uh, if they wanted to sell any of their honey. Uh, and a honey house is really a a licensed commercial kitchen uh, pretty much has all the same um, things, wash stations, uh, that a, a commercial kitchen would have. It can be very, very costly, especially if you're just going to do a little bit of honey. So what happened a couple years ago, a, uh, a new bill was put through that if, if a beekeeper um, for less than 500 gallons of comb or unprocessed honey. So unprocessed honey is uh, never is treated. You're never heating it up. Um, it is stri strictly going from the, um, uh, the tank directly into a bottle. If you're doing less than 500 gallons, you do not need any kind of license. You don't need to be doing it in a commercial kitchen. But if you're doing if you're heating up that honey somehow or doing something to it, if you're doing creamed honey, uh, flavoring your honeys, anything like that, um, and, or if you're doing more than the 500 gallons, then yes, you do need to be doing that in a licensed honey house. Marketing possibilities are really endless. You can always be coming up with new ideas. But generally, we think of uh, first off as the direct sales, on-farm sales. Somebody comes to your farm and buys it directly from you. Uh, as we've seen, those rules and regulations tend to be uh, a little bit more lax than if you're taking the product off the farm and selling it at farmers markets or restaurants, co-ops, small grocery stores. Farmers markets uh, have their own set of rules many times uh, about how they want the product handled. Like in Illinois, all meat products must be frozen if you are going to sell it at a farmers market. Uh, you can't buy fresh meat from a farmers market in Illinois. Uh, and there's other things that they require. So be sure if you're going to do the farmer's market, you look at their rules and regulations also. Um, uh, and as far as when you're thinking about going to a restaurant or co-op, think about how much product you are going to be able to provide with them because there's nothing worse than uh, promising something that you can't deliver on. And uh, most of the time they're going to be uh, wanting larger quantities. So be real upfront with them and try and get as much information about how much they are really going to require from you over time. Another possibility for market, uh, especially this is a good one if you don't have a lot of product but you kind of want to just kind of tread the water and, and see what's out there. Do some special holiday markets at Easter and Christmas. Sometimes you can find um, smaller farmers markets that they're just doing for one day or two days that you can get involved in. Uh, and then also, of course, the internet. If you have a website or a Facebook page uh, where you can get your name out there and your products. Uh, there's also local harvest. There's some, some internet sites out there that help you to market your products. Uh, allow you to put your name and address and things that you're selling. People can contact you. 
And if you have your own web page, then certainly uh, you can sell your products from there. You still have to abide by all your state rules and regulations. And if you're going to sell across state lines, remember that brings in a whole different set of rules uh, with where you're uh, getting your items processed. There are special lamb and goat meat holidays, especially in the ethnic markets, that if you're raising lamb and goat, you want to keep in mind because these holidays, usually they're looking for uh, younger lambs and kids. Uh, sometimes they don't want, they want them not to even be weaned yet so that they've never had any grass or been on any pasture. Uh, sometimes they just want to buy the live animals and again, they cannot kill those animals on your farm. They need to take them off the farm and handle the slaughtering on their own. In fact, you don't even want to talk about that with them. Just You are just selling those animals to them, live animals. Uh, you also, very important, you want to include this these timing of these holidays uh, in with your uh, breeding plans because maybe you would want to have a few uh, lambs and kids uh, very early in the season to accommodate the Easter um, holiday uh, early in spring. So maybe they would need to be bred uh, earlier in the fall. Uh, but you would need to include that in your in your plans, your farm plans, and uh, certainly uh, which animals you're going to be breeding when. As a final wrap-up, uh, I can't stress enough uh, to you about following the regulations for your state. Uh, if your state defers to the federal regulations, then you need to follow those. Uh, but it's up to the seller to know the facts. Uh, don't take anyone else's word for it that uh, they know uh, what's okay or not okay uh, just because your neighbor has been processing chickens uh, on his farm and then taking them to the farmer's market and nobody has said anything. Um, yeah, that's not okay because the word will get out that uh, something's been going on and uh, you don't want to get caught. Very steep fines. Uh, so you need to know, it's up to you to know the facts uh, for what products you are selling. Also, check your farm insurance and make sure that you are totally covered uh, for the animal products that you're selling. Uh, you don't want to be caught with something happening and you check with your insurance and they're like, well, we didn't know you were selling that particular product. You're not covered. Uh, just cover all your bases when it comes to uh, anything you sell that has a potential uh, um, health risk. Um, better to be safe than sorry in this case, for sure.